Hi everybody, um, welcome to lesson 8.5, uh, whether you're watching this on Thursday night or you're watching it over the weekend. Um, as you can see, um, this video is on scatter plots, and I know that that may be a little bit hard to read, um, but that is on purpose, because um, the way I wrote the word scatter plot is kind of how scatter plots work. Um, once again, I've got my good friend Ben here to help me with the video. Say hi, Ben. Hi. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just give you the basics of scatter plots. All right, so let's start with what is a scatter plot. Um, all the graphs that we've had in the last two lessons, both in 8.3 and in 8.4, um, were a matter of having points that exactly lined up. And so we learned some various tricks to figure out the slope between the points um, and to figure out the y-intercept so that we could find the equations of the line. Okay? And we, we over and over talked about the idea that it did not matter which two points you picked because since all the points were on the same line, um, the, the slope from any point to any other point on the line would be equal. No It matter, doesn't matter how far you're going because um, the farther apart the, the, the point is, yeah, you'll have to go up more for y, but you'll also have to go more across for x. The ratio, the steepness, stays constant, so the slope stays constant. Okay? All right. With scatter plots, it's not exactly like that. Okay? So just like the word scatter plot was all kind of spread out a little bit um, on the first page, that's the way scatter plots are in real life. So Ben and I have come up with this example that's a lot different from the ones in the books. And what we're going to do um, is we want you to suppose that for chapter 8, we're going to do the end of the chapter review a little bit differently um, than we've done in the past. Rather than spend a day or two going over chapter review and assigning problems and then going over them in class, and then doing the same thing for the chapter test. Let's say I just said, all right, I'm going to give you a day and a half to review. Here's some pro problems I rep rep recommend. Um, go ahead and do as many as you want, and when you feel like you're ready for the test, you can stop. All right? That's not that different than some of the things I do say. But let's say there's nothing that you have to do. It is going to be voluntary, and you get to pick how many problems. And the only thing I want you to do um, to count a problem, you have to work it from start to finish, and you have to basically get it right, or you have to get it wrong and then go back and fix it. So by the end of the review, you have done the problem correctly. And you have to report on the test how many problems you successfully finished. If you did 7, you write down, I did 7 problems. If you did 12, great, write down 12. If you do 37, you write down 37. And then what we're going to do is we're going to plot the number of review problems you did against the grade that you get on the test. Okay? Well, let's say that this actually happened. Let's say we did this previously uh, in a different year or a different class or a different chapter. Um, and what's going to happen is for each um, person... I'm going to come across and see how many tests they did. So let's say somebody reported that they did 20 questions of review, and they get an 87 on the test. So I come across here to 20, and I go up to 87, and I put a dot there. All right, somebody else also did 20 questions, but they got a 93 on the test. Actually, that was about a 95. Somebody else does 25 questions, but they only get an 82 on the test. Somebody else only did 10 questions, and they got a 75. Another person did uh, 20, let's say 15 questions, and they got a 95. Then there's somebody that did 40 questions, and they got 100. There's somebody that did 28 questions, and they also got 100. Um, somebody that did uh, 45 questions and got an 89. Okay. Somebody that did 15 questions and got an 85. Uh, somebody that does 35 questions and gets a 91. Somebody else that does 35 questions and gets an 89. Somebody that does 28 questions and gets a 93. All right. Let's just hypothetically say, and as you, as I read off each of those, I'm sorry I don't have a chart of values to show you, but as I read off each of those, I put a red dot on the graph. Okay? Is there a correlation? Now, this isn't real life, um, or I'm sorry, this isn't um, perfect data. Obviously, these points don't line up perfectly. But do we notice a trend? No. Well, um, let's put a couple more in. Let's say I've got one more person uh, that did 15 questions that got a 78. Um, somebody that did 20 questions uh, that got an 84. And somebody else that did 11 questions because they didn't go back and correct a lot of them, and they only got an 82. Now, I would argue that, all right, we got some points that are a little bit far. Okay, like this point right here is a person that didn't do very many problems but did pretty well. And this point down here, uh, is somebody that did a lot of problems but didn't do great on the test. If you kind of ignore those two points, I would argue that there's a line that kind of goes up like this. It's not perfect. And actually, you know what? I actually think um, I'm going to erase that line because I don't think it 
I think it needs to be a little bit different. I think it needs to be a little bit more like this. Okay, and if, you, if I draw that line in, you can notice about half of the points uh, are a little bit above the line, and by well, maybe a little bit. You know what? Looks like a few more are below the line, so let's redraw it one more time. Let's try to draw it so that about half the points are above the line and about half the points are below the line. Is that pretty close? Yeah. Okay, and so what we're noticing, we do notice a trend here. There is a positive trend that the more problems people did for practice, the higher their test grade was. There's some exceptions, but generally speaking, that's what I see. Okay? Um, the same thing happens a lot when we do science experiments. Um, if you're in Mr. Johnson's seventh grade science and you do an experiment, your points don't come out exactly perfectly in a line most of the time. If you do eight or ten trials, you're going to end up with data that's going to look kind of like the red dots. And then usually the next step in science class is to go ahead and to pick a trend line to kind of show the correlation. All right? So that's what a scatter plot is. That's how we use them. Now we can ask all kinds of questions, like how many people got 100? Ben? So look across at 100. How many dots are there up here at 100? It looks like there's two right there and there. Okay, and if I ask you how long the people, um, how many problems they did, which kind of goes along with how hard did they study, uh, looks like one person did about 20, uh, or maybe a little less, 23, 24 questions, and the other person 45. did like 40, Five. oh, not quite 45, because 45 would be way over here, but like maybe 42. Yeah. Maybe a little bit less than that. Maybe just 40 questions. Okay. But anyway, um, so the, all right, um, who did the least amount of uh, practice problems? That would be this person down here, correct? Yeah. Okay, they only did 10 practice questions. They only got a 75 on the test. Probably not a coincidence, right? Okay. Um, there are some exceptions. Uh, like we said before, there's this dot right here uh, where the person only did a few, bit, few more than maybe like 13 or 14 questions, um, but they did very well. And maybe the reason they didn't do a lot of review is they felt pretty comfortable with the material. Okay? All right. Well, all right. That's enough. That's the basic idea of scatter plots. Now, we do have three different kinds of scatter plots. Okay? We've got scatter plots like the one we just did where the points basically, they're not perfect, but they kind of basically go up and to the right. Okay? And we call this a positive correlation. We have other scatter plots that might look like this where they kind of go downhill. Okay? So we call that a negative correlation. It doesn't mean a bad correlation. It just means that the slope is negative. Yeah. Okay? And then you've got scatter plots that look like this. They basically look like somebody has taken a shotgun and they have basically just put a bunch of dots. Um, and you could argue that you see a trend there, but I think you're kind of crazy. No and so, yeah, I would say that's no. And for all of these, what we're talking about, positive, negative, or no, we're talking about the correlation. Okay, so if um, the points kind of show a trend and it's going up, we call it positive. If it's kind of showing a trend but it's coming down, we call it a negative correlation. Um, and if they're just all completely crazy and all over the place, we say that's no correlation. Okay, now, we can also talk about how tight the correlation is. So if the points are like this, that's a very tight, very, very strong positive correlation. Okay, whereas the one that we had before... This was, this was a pretty good, but it wasn't quite as strong as these other two, was it? Yeah. Okay. Um, the negative, again, I could have a really super tight one like this, or I could have one that, let me take these yellow dots, and let's add a couple more dots. Okay. Now, it's still kind of, most of the dots kind of follow that yellow line, but there's several dots that are kind of off. So that would be a weaker correlation. So these guys up here would be very strong, very strong correlations. Okay, ones that are like this would be, it's still a negative correlation, but this would be a much weaker negative correlation. Okay, and then the weakest correlation is when you almost don't see any correlation, and that would be something like this. You don't have to have a lot of dots to have no correlation, by the way. You could just have four dots like this, like that are the four corners of a square, because you could argue that this line kind of fits two of them, but not the other two. Well, so does this line. So does this line. You could even do a vertical line. Okay, none of those lines are any better than any other. So we would say that's no correlation. In fact, that would be an exactly zero correlation. What we usually do is we think of correlations kind of as um, almost like test scores. So a really positive correlation is going to be a decimal like 0 0.95, 0 0.93, 0 0.85 even would be really strong. If you have a correlation like 0.15, think of that like that's like getting a 15% on a test. That's not very good. Okay, you took the test, you got a few things right, but it's not a very good fit, right? Same idea with these. All right, so those are the different kinds of correlation for scatter plots. 
Um, and again, like we said, you're going to have to be able to look at a scatter plot and get data off of it. But I'm going to try to stay uh, as close to 10 minutes as possible. So we will practice scatter plots in class tomorrow. Thank you very much for tuning in. On Monday. behalf of, well, you know, I guess it'll be Monday we'll actually do the practice. But on behalf of myself and my good friend, Mr. Gillig, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.